Welcome back to Mornings with Dave King and Matt Martin, and we want to get directly to the phones. We've got Dr. Skuvenik on the line. Uh, Dr. Skuvenik, it's been a little while since we've spoken to you, but uh, how are things over at Texas Tech? Well, Matt, it's good to hear from you and Dave. I hope you're doing doing well. Um, we're actually we're doing okay. Um, of course, every day we pay a lot of attention to our situation as it relates to positive cases, and uh, in spite of the spike of cases in Lubbock, um, we've been more or less holding course. Uh, yesterday, we only had seven new active cases, five among the students and two among the employees. And uh, so we do have a substantial number of active cases on campus, 189. Um, but when you consider we have an enrollment of over 40,000 and over 5,500 employees, uh, we feel that's still very manageable. Well, the, um, the other thing with Texas Tech is it started out when you first opened the school. Um, y'all had a whole bunch of cases come in, but it seems like y'all have been able to get most of that under control. You're absolutely right. Uh, at one point, we reached um, around 600 uh, last of August, 1st of September. Um, since then, uh, until last week, we had had five consecutive weeks with the total number of new cases gone down. We had a slide up tick last week. Uh, but no more than what it was two or three weeks ago. Um, I believe it does uh, speak to the fact that on campus, uh, students, uh, if I see them around campus, uh, they seem to be um, you know, wearing their masks. Um, the, the population, the campus is, you know, there's a lot less people on campus than there were last year, of course. Uh, so we, we feel like uh, we're, we're so far so good. Um, we only had, as of Sunday, we only had 30 students in isolation. Those would be those that live in the dorms that we put into um, special locations when they have to isolate. Uh, that number was as high as 200 early in the semester. It was 30 on Sunday. That, now, we have some who live off campus that are in isolation. But, uh, but in spite of that, Matt, you may be aware that last week we issued uh, an announcement that for the three days after Thanksgiving, we will not be conducting face-to-face -face courses. Those courses will go to online. For most students, it's one day uh, on a Tuesday, Thursday, Wednesday, Friday schedule. Some will miss Monday and Wednesday. Yeah. But with people traveling, we just thought that would be a way to reduce the risk. So can I ask you about um, how you're going to do or how the school's going to do uh, finals on that? Because I know yeah. that that normally finals are done in person uh, with in-person classes as the last class day or, or after the last class day. How is Texas Tech going to do that? They're all going to be online. So um, th there was a memo that came out after that. We didn't address that in the early one, and that did cause some confusion. So we are going to have finals online, but today we'll be issuing a, an announcement to the university community that we will be offering in-person graduation. Um, we're going to do that as well as a virtual, and um, we'll. I think as 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 of yesterday, I believe we we're planning to have either seven to eight um, event, uh, ceremonies in the United Supermarkets Arena. It's going to be very different. There'll be no speakers, no faculty will be there. Every student's name will be read and their fate, and, and they will take a picture with me, and they'll be on the, the big scoreboard. And then we'll Photoshop it to make it look like we're standing next to one another. <laughs> there, you, there you go. <laughs> that, that's that's what they told me yesterday. Uh, yeah. And then we will still have a virtual ceremony because a lot of people won't want to come. And I believe uh, we'll be uh, allowing uh, four to five family members. So we'll have four ceremonies on a Friday and a Saturday, and I'll be at all of them. Um, and uh, it. We, we've, we've been slow in making this announcement because we've been looking at the possibilities. We thought of doing it in Jones Stadium. We thought at one time it wasn't viable, but it means so much to people that we wanted to do everything we could to see if we could offer that, and that's what we're going to do. Yeah, they, yeah. I mean, they work hard for well, that, don't they? They do, and it means a lot to, to, yeah. to Dr. families. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes, Dave, I can hear you. Okay, good. Because I, I, I want to ask you something. The general consensus that I'm hearing, now, you tell me I'm wrong, but it seems like that the the online learning, with, at least with the public education, 
has not worked out well. And we are even hearing some cases here in our area where they're going to they're going to stop that and they're going to bring the students back to school. Yeah. What what do you see at Texas Tech University as far as this online distance learning? It, it, what, what how do you see the value of it? Um, it's mixed, but I believe if you took a poll, you would find the majority of students said it was substandard, and it varies very much, um, kind of on the course, and sometimes the faculty members. Um, we were offering 15 to 20 percent of our courses online before this, and it's a matter of convenience to students. And there was a strict policy people would have to go to to, to offer an online course. Certain pedagogical practices had to be employed. This had to be vetted through the Office of eLearning. When we made this massive transition last spring, you could understand that uh, it was a different sort of experience. Uh, and, and I would say faculty should be commended because it takes a heck of a lot of time to do it online. My wife is teaching face-to-face this fall. She much prefers that. She'll tell you it's less time. She said, well, she would spend three to four hours for one class preparation online. It's much less if you do it face-to-face. And so, um, and, and, and I would say that uh, students have said that what they miss besides just having a, an instructor in front of them is the opportunity to interact with their classmates. We do have, you know, mechanisms that have chat rooms and study experiences and places on campus they can get together, but it's not the same. And um, so, I, in fact, this last week I went back and I looked at the evaluations for the spring semester, last spring, and they were slightly up. It's an online uh, uh, method that we, we assess these evaluations, the three questions they respond to, and they were slightly up. The grades were slightly down uh, that we distributed. So um, there's a lot of misconceptions about online. Um, it's really not cheap, They're less expensive. Uh, you have the personnel cost, which is 60, 70% of our budget, but then there's a lot of fixed costs, um, ADA compliance and so on. Um, for the spring semester, the colleges have already turned in their schedule. And we ask them to keep the online, exclusively online, to 30% or less. And what the provost informed me is that 50% of the courses that were turned in will be pure face-to-face. The other 50% will be a mix of online and hybrid. Now, that may change as this COVID situation evolves, but we do recognize that students want online, and we think it's a better learning experience. Okay. Well, yeah. I, mean, no, I mean face-to-face. Excuse yeah, me. Face-to-face. They want yeah. face-to-face. Sorry. Well, and, too, you know, Dr. Schooner, I don't need to tell you that a big part of the university uh, experience is just the experience of being around other people your age. And it's not just all about classroom learning. Dave, you're absolutely right. I think one reason our enrollment went up, um, I mean, and to put this in context, you may have seen in the Wall Street Journal last week, There's a headline that nationwide undergraduate enrollment went down 4.5%. Freshman enrollment went down 16%. And I think that reflects that a fact that many people said, why why should I send my son or daughter to a university, especially if they're coming out of high school, just to take online courses? They want that more traditional residential experience. Now, at Tech, we were up 4% overall, a little over 4 and 6% in our freshman class because we did, um, you know, we we made a a case that we were going to try to offer more face-to-face. And some people were disenchanted that it it depends on colleges. Some got one course, some got more. But I believe the fact that we tried to offer more face-to-face was a factor in our increasing enrollment. Yeah. All right, we've got to take... Yeah, we've got to take a quick break. Uh, we'll be right back uh, with Dr. Skubinik, president of Texas Tech University on News Talk 95.1 FM, 790 AM KFYO. And we're back uh, on News Talk 95.1 FM, 790 AM KFYO with the president of Texas Tech University, Dr. Skubinik. Uh, Dr. Skubinik, I know that uh, you probably can't say too much, but uh, it's big news right now that uh, former Tech women's basketball coach Marling Stallings filed a lawsuit. Is there anything at all that you can tell us about what's going on there? Uh, no, Matt, I can't. And, and, and I think you, 
I assume people. that was true. I, I was just going to ask. It's yeah, big yeah. News. Uh, in fact, I visited with general counsel last evening, went over the issues, but I can't say any more than that. And and uh, so I think you would understand because that yep. is in listen. But maybe what I could address is um, the review that we initiated some time ago when after that incident, uh, Kirby Holcutt had asked, for a review of all of athletics. Right. And so we enlisted the firm, Hall in the Night. Uh, Janet Judge is a highly respected attorney who specializes in, in these sort of investigations. She's in the process of entering, interviewing um, people across the university, both in, uh, in the university and in athletics. We have regular meetings. She updates us on the progress of that review. And we, we hope it will be concluded early in January. And um, so um, I, I think that's a very positive and healthy thing to go through, and, and that's moving forward. So with uh, Texas Tech Athletics, are, are we going to see, uh, you know, the basketball season coming up, both women's and men's um, and, and other sports as we move into the, uh, the spring semester? Right. So uh, I believe the first game is in November. Uh, We're planning on, I think, around 25% capacity in the United Supermarkets Arena. Um, And um, uh, for men and women, uh, they began practice uh, like Mike was last week. Uh, So uh, that's moving forward. Uh, You know, the the football games have gone fairly well. Um, Of course, it's a very different environment. Right. this is homecoming week and OU next week. Um, so uh, it's just odd. Uh, I, I went to the game at Iowa State at Ames, and I went to the game at Kansas State, and it's it's almost bizarre. There's no tailgating. We're the only school in the Big 12 doing tailgating, and it's just a, a very different environment. I think everybody knows that. It's a strange year we have to get through. Yeah, yeah the, the, the no if doubt. you go to the game, you have to cheer twice as loud, right? Right, and, and sometimes uh, it's hard to do. <laughs> yeah, I understand. <laughs> well, Doctor Skubnik, look, we have a <clears throat> uh, we have a texture this morning that says, "Give us an update <clears throat> on the vet school." Uh, well, that's good news. Um, it was a, about a month ago that we heard from the the AVMA, the accrediting body, that our um, accreditation. We were given a letter of assurance which meant we could move forward with enrolling students. Um, We went up there for a press conference when that was announced. So that was our last hurdle. Um, And so during the process of recruiting the first class for next fall, I took a tour through that building. It's fabulous. And they're making wonderful progress. Because they built this from scratch, uh, it has some features that many, many veterinary schools don't have. It was all coordinated. It's going to be a fabulous facility. Uh, the first class is going to be bigger than we actually planned. Uh, we think we're going to be having about 100 in the class. We're talking about 40, then going to 60. The demand is high. And we've already hired some, you know, around 25 faculty and staff at least. And, and Guy Lawner Reagan is doing a wonderful job there. So that is moving forward very, very well. Well, and the, and really, the veterinarians are highly needed in this area as well. They are. They are. You know, and that, um, we had an event on campus last week when we had the ribbon cutting for the old dairy barn. And th- th- this is sort of... And it looks it, nice, it, by the way. I, I saw the pictures. I, well, I, Matt, I hope you get out there and can go inside. It's It's really, really nice. And there's a lot of photographs on the wall that tell the history of that barn. But um, it was a beautiful, lovely West Texas Day morning, and we had people there, and it was just a wonderful experience. And and it's like the vet school that speaks to, uh, as I said, our heritage and our roots, that is West Texas and agriculture. And it's a great, I think, symbol that we, we maintain that connection. I'm glad we're preserving that barn i hope you all get I, I would invite the public to try to get out and look at it it's really really neat is it open to the public right now um having said that i should have known what i was talking about uh i bet you could uh, there would be a lot of events there mm-hmm. but I, I um i i would say that if somebody really wants to take a tour we, we'll we'll make sure we can get them in there all right, all right. 
Um, and uh, now, uh, coming up next spring, uh, right now, I, it sounds like y'all, you uh, as, a t- as a university, are looking at having a fairly normal schedule, uh, kind of like it was at least, uh, not normal as in normal, but normal as in uh, what y'all had during the fall. Right. We, we, a, as of now, the schedule that we have in place does include more face-to-face instruction. Um, as I mentioned earlier, what, what was turned in preliminarily was about 50% would be purely face-to-face. And I visited with the provost yesterday who's reached out to a few colleges where they don't have that uh, number of face-to-face. And um, that, that's one of the issues. We advertise these yeah. sort of average numbers, but they won't hear from a student that in my college I could only get one course and such, and, and that causes some dissatisfaction. Okay. So we're going to continue to try to offer a substantial amount of face-to-face and then the hybrid, keep the purely online to less than 30%. All right. All right. Well, Dr. Skudnik, I apologize. Uh, we're out of time, but thank you so much for coming on and telling us what's going on at Texas Tech. Chad Hasty is going to be up next.